Good morning, it's Feedback, and on the line, we have, on the lines, I should say, we have Tom Hargan of LEAD and Ken Purdue, plant manager of Logan Aluminum. Good morning, guys. Good to have you on the air with me. Good morning, guys. Tom, are you there? I am. Okay, all right. See, I I haven't disconnected anybody yet. I'm I'm doing much better. All right. I'll take our first commercial break. We'll we'll come back and uh, and talk with the gentleman. Of course, if you have a question or a comment for either of them you'd like to make, we'll take your calls, of course. We'll be back right after these messages from a couple of our sponsors. Saving money never goes out of style, especially when we're talking about big-ticket items like a new HVAC system. That's why it's important you call Knight Electric Heating and Cooling at 270-726-3818. As a preferred contractor, they can help you choose the right system for your home or commercial building. They'll recommend energy-efficient units that save on your utility bill and may qualify for special financing from your electric company. Knight Electric Heating and Cooling technicians are available 24-7 to work on any brand or model. If your system can be repaired, you can trust them to do the job right without wasting your time or money. But if your unit is beyond repair, they'll offer options that can serve energy and cash. Once your unit is up and running, Knight Electric Heating and Cooling can perform routine maintenance to ensure you get the longest life out of your system. Don't take chances with your comfort. Call Knight Electric Heating and Cooling at 270-726-3818. License number MO4318. When you lose a loved one, a number of details must be worked out in a relatively short amount of time. The pressure of these decisions is only made worse by the grief the family is feeling. This is Wayne Reeves. Since 1959, our community has trusted Young Funeral Home to help them through this difficult time. As a family-owned funeral home, we understand the value of family and know that's how our friends and neighbors deserve to be treated. Young Funeral Home with chapels in Russellville and Auburn. On the lines this morning, we have Tom Harned and Ken Purdue. Tom, you want to lead off this morning first? Well, I'd like to ask Ken to produce him to introduce himself. Ken's one of the good guys. We're pleased to have him on feedback this morning. Absolutely. It's been my pleasure to have known him for several years now, and he's one of the key managers, uh, plant manager actually, out at Logan Aluminum. So, Ken, if you would uh, tell us about who you are and where you come from and how you got here. Okay, thanks, Tom. Thanks, Don. Good morning to both of you. I'm um, Ken Purdue, plant manager at Logan Aluminum. I moved to Russellville or the Logan County area in June of 1985, and it was by chance, I guess, that I moved here, that I found out about Logan. I started, I grew up in West Virginia, went to school at Virginia Tech. I'm a mechanical engineer by training and went to work at a steel mill in Texas, and one of the engineers in my entry class was a a good friend named Dave Davis. So Dave and I worked through at the steel mill in Houston together for a while, then Dave came to Logan. I went to eastern Kentucky at a steel mill. Dave and Darlene had their first child, and I came down to visit him, and I thought, man, compared to what I'd seen at the steel mill and seeing this place being built in 1985, it was it was very impressive. And uh, really, wasn't an, an interview per se, but I met a few people and got a, had a phone call and pretty much decided to make the move to Roseville, and I'm very glad I did. I've been here since 85. I had a period when I left for about... Um, Seven or eight years, I went to work with a friend in northern Ohio in a business that supported this industry and really never thought I'd go back into manufacturing. But um, the attraction to Logan is the people, the culture of this area. My wife is from this area. And when I had the opportunity, opportunity to come back at the, the end of 2003, beginning of 2004, actually, I was... Um, I made the decision to come back, so I'm glad to be here. And I haven't been, I've been in this job as a plant manager for a little over eight years now, but I work throughout the plant in a lot of the different business units. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you, are you the same Ken Purdue who performed a wedding in Key West? <laughs> made the Philadelphia Inquirer, as a matter of fact. <laughs> That's that, that's 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 me, Don. I'm not sure how you found out about that one. Well, yeah, <laughs> you know, you could Google Ken Purdue and see all kinds of good things. <laughs> that was that was that was actually for my niece, and uh, that, I was I was honored to be asked to do that. And it was, it was my first; it's the first time I've ever done a wedding, and um, I did that this summer. <laughs> uh, it was back in June, was it? How, yes, how, sir. How do you get what do you what uh, hoops do you have to jump through to get qualified to perform a wedding? Well, it was it was actually I, I called a check on that, and I mean I'm you know I'm a Christian, and I wanted I believe in you know, 
my values are aligned that way. But they asked me as a what what my brother my my niece asked me if I would do their wedding. I was really honored, and, and my wife and I worked with her and her husband. And um, I checked on that. You have to either be a judge or a notary republic in Florida, and that was going to be that was kind of out of the question living in you know living in Kentucky. And I called the Key West Courthouse. They said, well, you can become ordained, and you can become ordained by applying online. And so you apply online, you get an ordination. And now trust me, or believe me, I don't think what I did is comparable to people that go to seminary and become actual pastors and do that. But I was able to say that I – and you go through a check sheet about your, 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 your what, what your beliefs on marriage are, and they were aligned with my personal beliefs. So you send them a check, and you can do it. It seems it's more administrative than anything else. So <laughs> and, and I don't, with, with your new ordination, you. you're probably not be holding tent revivals around anytime soon, right? No, but I, you, but you try to, but you try to your ministry. You want your ministry to be the way you live every day. I right. think is what I try. To, what I would say. That's great. That's great. That's terrific. Don, uh, I've got to give you credit. You you indeed are a reporter <laughs> to uh, to have found that. So your bona fides just went up a couple of points. In well, my you know that it said Ken Perdue. Then I, I noticed that. <laughs> Uh, one of the, uh, uh, the the groom, I think, was employed at Logan Aluminum, I believe, and so on. So I said, "Ah, I bet that's the same guy." <laughs> that is, that's the um, <laughs> of all the questions I anticipated. That was, that's <laughs> We're not looking for that one. Huh? Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, let me. Uh, I'll, I'll turn turn Tom loose on you in a minute. But the background, and, and I've interviewed you interviewed you on the air before. Your your background in steel how does that carry over to aluminum is it totally different or uh well i, I know the two metals are different but what about what about the process now the the, the 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 manufacturing processes the rolling equipment processing equipment are um, they're very similar don they the uh at one time, the tolerance and the specifications for aluminum were much more precise or exact than steel required, but steel has come a long way also in both industries. I mean, the technology and the uh, process are advancing in both of them very well, but you know, it, it's very similar. And, um, you know, the steel and aluminum are different, but um, aluminum has the advantage in a lot of cases where its uh, strength-to-weight ratio is a little bit better than steel. Now, the steel people would argue that's not the case either with certain alloys, and there may be a case for that also. But it's the process of the manufacturing processes are similar. A rolling mill looks like a, ro- a steel rolling mill looks much like an aluminum rolling mill. Except in steel, this, it's typically glowing, you know, kind of red hot, and aluminum doesn't change color as it heats up. Before I, before I call on Tom again, I, I, I've, I've mentioned this. I have great personal connection with Logan Aluminum and very fun, much fun. My stepson, Tony Epley, will be retiring from there in a couple of years. My grandson-in-law, Michael Haley, is a more recent employee. So, I, you know, I've, 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 I've got family members coming and going there. At oh, Logan yeah. And I've, worked with, I've worked in the same department with Tony for years. He and I have been teammates for, we've worked in the same department for a okay. long time. And now, but guys like Michael, that's it. We need to, we need a, the new, our new teammates, the newer ones, to come along and, and keep this thing going. Right. Okay, Tom. We uh, are all very much aware of the pandemic and what's been going on. And Ken, I, I thought you might uh, tell us a little bit about uh, how that's affected Logan Aluminum and, and the production schedules. From uh, what we see and hear in the community, you guys have been able to keep going pretty much without interruption. I do understand that you've had several people working from home, more than several. And uh, also the uh, automotive market has has slowed down, and and probably uh, my guess would be the beverage can market has actually picked up a little bit with uh, people staying at home and consuming more beverages, but I'd I'd like to hear your take on all of that. This this has been and continues to be a very challenging time. And we've been trying to do everything we can to make sure that we're making safe decisions or helping people make safe decisions. And so, you know, we were at an, all, at an off-site meeting in the middle of March, one, and we we're talking about our strategic plan and a vision going forward, and what, what the next few years trying to lay out what the plans look like, and then came into work on Monday, I think it was like St. Patrick's Day, and we are on a call about how we almost idle, the, well, not idle the plant, but almost take a, we didn't know what we were going to have to do at that time. And it changed that fast. 
And to the credit of this team, we have we have an emerg a crisis management team, and I think the HR team, our medic. I, I can't say enough about our medical people here in the EHS team. The um, the responsiveness to do that. We're, we're a little bit ahead in terms of PPE, the masks, and the things that are required, but we certainly didn't anticipate this. So we quickly took a look at, you know, who was who absolutely had to be here, who could provide work, who could work from another location. And we have a lot of people that are contributing that are still working every day, but they're not in this building. And we let people, we're trying to balance that. Uh, let, I mean, no one's, no employees are, forbidden to come to work, but we ask them to make good decisions about when they have to be there. But I can't say enough about the operating teams and the general technicians and the, and the people that are, that are in the manufacturing teams because they're doing the job and we haven't really missed any production to speak of. They, uh, it's a matter of talking to them, communicating what's going on. And this situation is changing. What we thought two months ago is different than what we think today. But it's a matter of talking to them, listening to them, seeing what they need, what does it take for them to do their job. We're trying to make sure we have all the PPE. We spend a lot of, a lot of time disinfecting, you know, fogging rooms with disinfectant, control rooms. The teams manage the um, push buttons and um, operating controls that they touch frequently. They're managing that. We have some outside contractors that do some professional cleaning if we, if we need to get deeper into that. Um, we're trying to manage social distancing and you know logan is a very familial place people sit in rooms and talk and we're trying to separate provide space for that and i was outside i mean outside in the building the other day there one of the teams was having a team meeting or out standing in a circle outside the plant pretty far apart and uh, we're, we're trying to be very flexible and it's it's not it's business as usual in terms of manufacturing but in the way we're achieving that we're trying to give the team some latitude um, make the adjustments they need. I mean, Logan is a it's a, it's a principal based business with um, participative management system. We're trying to make the make the right decision at the right place in the organization. And I can't say enough about how strong these teams are and what they've been what they've accomplished because they're they get they're getting the job done safely. And um, I, my hats off. I, I'm in all of those uh, in all of those groups, uh, Tom and Don. Would you uh, speak a bit to the uh, market conditions and how the market is holding up for automotive uh, and for beverage can sheet? Yeah, the the mar the in the market and what you said in in, in your question um, was correct. The automotive industry dropped really fast, but the can industry just continued to grow. And I saw something on a, on the news this weekend that there's a shortage of cans, and I was I'm trying to find out what's behind that because mm. I mean, we're 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 shipping as much as we ever have. And it looks like people are, um, I don't know if they're stocking up on cans or, or, the, or, the, or the gap is in the recycle inputs. They can't get it back to the recycle centers and get it through the system back so it comes back in to the plant. But I talk to, um, I've talked to people in the, that are on the automotive side, and they say they're starting to see a little bit of, you know, some positive news where they're going to try to ramp, start, you know, manufacturing again. So, you know, it's... It's encouraging for aluminum right now, but the can business, like you said, it, it's it's been a good time to be in the can business for for for, for manufacturing can sheet. I read that some time back, uh, the idea was was plastic was going to take over and going to definitely hurt the aluminum cans, but now the attitude of the public against plastic has changed so much, and and we're talking about you know how hard it is to uh, to get rid of plastic and the long term effects, and that uh, if there was a pause in uh, can uh, can stock manufacturing and and the man manufacturing of cans, it's all turned around and come back up again. Am, am I right on that? That's that's correct, and a, a, a lot of the can producers, a lot of the do to do with the um, their sustainability and the cans are I mean an aluminum can is infinitely recyclable and it takes you know it takes five percent of the energy to make a can from recycled content as it does from prime material and it's it's just it, it's infinitely recyclable and one, a can should really never end up in a landfill where bottles you see all the things the plastic mm -hmm. bottles the pet products you see those um all the bad uh, press that they're getting on the internet and in the news, and um, 
it just it, it really sh- it changed very it, it changed pretty fast on them. And now, now there's a lot of petroleum products in plastic, and they're not going to sit by and let this happen without. Um, they're not going to go away. I mean, they're not just going to go away. We have to continue to do our part and make sure we're doing the right thing. Uh, let, let me ask you, Ken, is all of the work you do at Logan with recycled material, or do you still uh, still have to use some newly mined uh, uh, product? Uh, we No, we still, there's still a percentage of our input that comes from prime material, which comes from the bauxite and the, you know, the, the, the smelters. But there is a lot of recycled content, and it's 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 in the, it's on the order between. It varies depending on the alloy and the product, but it's in the order of sixty-five to eighty seventy-five percent, maybe. I mean, I couldn't I, I wouldn't quote an exact number, but it's it's a significant amount of what we produce is from recycled content. Now, some of the automotive specs are more complex alloys require different inputs and the different alloying elements and so that's that you know that stuff comes in as raw well as a prime or raw material okay tom something that, that's uh, always puzzled me and, and this is a bit on the technical side but i have visions uh, with with the alloys and, and i know the uh the pull tab on a can and the top of a can are slightly different a different alloy than the body of the can and i have visions of this giant bubbling cauldron and uh, you've got a recipe, and you're putting in so much of type A and so much of type B and so much of type C to come up with the exact alloy that, that you want. Uh, how in the world do you mix molten aluminum and check it to make sure that you're creating exactly the right alloy for the end product? That's that's a great question. Actually, it's a complicated, it's a complex, it's a complex. <laughs> Sorry. Oh no, that's a good question. And this, you know, and and we try to alloy in the melter, and they do chemistry checks where they'll take a sample, a representative sample, and like you said, it is your. your it's like the ingredients. It's like baking a cake, a big cake. You're add a little of this, a little of that, and, and there's been a lot of smart people that have come through Logan that have developed these alloys. And we do checks, and we have labs, and you know, right on the shop floor that uh, do the, the chemical analysis of it. And to the credit of the teams here, they're very good at getting it very close. And then they'll say, all of a sudden, they'll say, "Well, we need a little silicon, or need a little bit of this, a little bit of that." And someone will find it, they'll mix it in, and stir it up. But it's uh, and, and it's all traceable. We keep records on every batch, we, you know, every heat we make, uh, because it has to be. We have to have the traceability for it. But it's it is. It is a very complex process, and Logan was built. We really optimized our process for the can body stock you mentioned and the can in stock, and and the plant got pretty efficient and pretty optimized for those products. Then when these automotive products came in, that was a whole different uh, mix and a whole different alloys, and understanding how to blend it back in and remelt it, reuse it, we had to learn a lot of new things all over again. <laughs> a lot, we're still, and we're still learning, I should say. Ken, uh, you talk about the te- the teams. I'm a, I'm an old guy. I admit it. People know <coughs> people know I am. But I remember when the when 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 the, it was talk about well something this innovation in these industries they're going to to team uh, uh, the the t- team system. It's not just. Uh, one guy uh, tightening the screw and the next guy doing something else. These teams are working together. This is such an important part of industry. They, is that pretty universal as far as uh, American industries are concerned? I think people are trying to get there, Don, but it takes a lot of patience to get there. And when Logan is fortunate, has been fortunate that the way this process was developed and implemented here, I mean, I can't say enough about the people that founded this place, the Fred Mudges, the Mike Harris's, mm-hmm. um, that, that built the foundation. And Logan is a joint venture. So the first 10 years, we operated our, under the consent decree, and neither owner had a lot of input into what happened. And that's when we tried to really develop the, uh, the get the inertia or the momentum behind this participative management or the team management and uh, and there were times in that first 10 years that each owner was probably unhappy and said, let's go back to traditional manufacturing. Let's get somebody in there and put a little energy into or, or kick somebody in the rear and make, make something happen. And, uh, and it takes a lot of patience. If the, but you're, 
it goes back to having the right decisions made at the right place in the organization. And there's not one person here that has all the answers. We depend on, you know, 1,400 people contributing every day and trying to make what they do safer, better, and more efficient. And if you can harness that, it um, it's been very effective. I mean, it really has. It's been, and I think it's. I've told some. I've, I've said this before. It's almost divine providence. This plant was built where it was when it was, and it, I mean, this, this the work ethic of the people in this area, the um, the attitude that there's a there's an agriculture kind of an agriculture feel to this area. And, you know, people aren't here, the, the people that built this plant, they weren't waiting for people to tell them how to solve problems. They were, they were the can-do type of attitude, and they were solving problems and making things happen. And the inertia, from, the inertia from that has been very beneficial to Logan going forward. I mean, and our growth, I think it's been, like I said, it's almost divine providence. This plant was built where it was when it was. Let's take a call. Uh, good morning. You're on the air with Ken Perdue and Tom Harned. Yeah, uh, I want to be on feedback. I, I live on the Edwards Road across from this remelting plant uh, that y'all got over here on a, across from it, and we are bombarded with gnats. All the neighbors are through here are just bombarded with them. I, I had my granddaughter with me last night, and they had to pick gnats out of their food this morning to eat their breakfast. It's just, a, it's just unreal what we're having to deal with through here. And uh, I've called a couple of times, and they said, "Well, we'll spray and do this and do that." But we're—it's just—it's uh, unreal. I mean, I would like for some of their representatives to come to my house and look at my house and see what we have to deal with. I did. Ken, is, is gnats a problem you had to deal yeah, with see, before? I, 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 I didn't. No, it was, not, sounded very good. not until this recycling plant come in. It's been for the last few years like this, and it's getting worse and worse all the time. It seems like. And I think I think there probably are seasonal related to the probably to the recycled content. I, I received a text message Friday about that and started checking into that. I don't have the answer at this moment. But I'm looking into it. We'll, we'll look into that. But I I think it's probably well. I would theorize it's related to the cans and the inputs at the recycle. Do you do you live like on Edwards Road or somewhere out behind the plant? I didn't hear the whole question. Yes, yes, I live on Edwards. Right? Oh, it's uh, I don't live directly behind the plant, but just down the hill from it. Of course, all of our neighbors through here, my my aunt and and uh, the, the, some people on top of the hill, the, the Salvios and different different ones. It's just uh, it's just uh, unreal what we're having to deal with. Don, if you get if you can get all that, I didn't get I can't I can't hear him very well on my phone right here, but I I, I got the gist of it. And you can I don't think you hear me. I'm looking into this. We hope to I hope to figure something out this or see what the solution may be this week. Uh, caller, did you understand what Ken said, looking into and hoping to come to a conclusion or solution this, this week? Well, I, I, I hope I hope so. I appreciate it. And uh, but uh, like I say, we got to. We I, I just I just like you come to my send somebody to my house. I just, I just like you to see. You. I mean, it, you you wouldn't believe it till you've seen it. What what is your address? What is your address, sir? My my address is six thirty six Edwards Road. Six thirty six Edwards Road. Well, I'll pass that along and and uh, here to Ken Purdue and uh, and uh, and and I think he heard enough to understand that you're wanting somebody to come uh, come to your house. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Yeah, I, got, I got that. I'm okay. going to it, it even gets in it. our food, and we're trying to eat. In our, it, it gets in our refrigerator. It, it's just <laughs> everywhere. I mean, everywhere. Hmm. Yeah. I, 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 I apologize. For, I apologize that this is happening. We'll see if we can't find some way to remediate this thing. Oh. Okay, I, I appreciate it, then. Hey, thank Sir. you. Thank you for calling. Sure. You want okay, to talk to uh, Ken Purdue and uh, Tom Harned locally, 270-726-6100, long distance, toll-free, 1-888-610-WRUS. We'll be back with them right after this. The coronavirus pandemic has changed the way we do business at Raleigh White and Clinic Pharmacy in Bowling Green and Franklin. But it hasn't changed the way we take care of our customers. We're still serving your prescription needs, but instead of you entering the store, we bring them to you at the curb or the drive through We've also tried to make it as easy as possible for you to order your prescriptions. RX Mobile is our easy-to-use mobile app you can download to your phone or your tablet. It also allows you to view your drug history, prescriber information, insurance, and more. And if you don't have a compatible device, you can log in at RaleighWhiteDrugs.com. 
Raleigh White provides the same tendal service we always have while using modern innovations to fit the challenging time. As we begin the process of reopening the stores, we begin to schedule vaccinations that are due. Please call ahead for scheduling at Raleigh White on the Square in downtown Russell, Clinic Pharmacy at Graves Gilbert on Park Street and Bowling Green, and Clinic Pharmacy Franklin in the Red Oak Medical Plaza, South Main Street, Franklin. On the line with us this morning, uh, Tom Harned, uh, the director of LEAD, and Ken Purdue, plant manager at Logan Aluminum. Uh, Tom, you uh, sail back in here, okay? Okay. As a uh, follow-up, we've mentioned recycling a, a couple of times. I read something a, a while back that the Chinese had quit buying recyclable aluminum and that that had created a glut on the market and the price of the scrap aluminum beverage cans in particular had uh, had really dropped but that was several months back and uh, of course that works to logan's advantage and to logan county's advantage to have lower price for all material especially if if the price for your finished goods is holding constant and uh, hopefully it is and uh, ken would would you react to that or scrap scrap price is still down or are they beginning to come back up well, they bit, they have bit the, the spread between scrap and, and the sales price. And, and to, to be clear, both of our owners do the, all the transactions for the sales to the end users. But they, a lot of their business plan is built on the spread between scrap price and their sales price. And that mark, it did get low because some of it's related to the tariffs when um, product wasn't necessarily going to China. The scrap wasn't going back to China. So what you have, there's in, there were imports from, from Asia coming into the West Coast, the U.S. CAM market, that process scrap from the CAM plants ended up staying in the U.S., so there became a, a lot of inputs in the U.S., but now we're starting to see that's a little bit tougher to come by, and that's something that we're trying to understand, the dynamics of that, because, you know, Logan has two strong owners. We have Novellus and Triers. Novellus does a lot of the casting at um, Maria, Kentucky, and Greensboro, Georgia, at Logan, and then some of the other alloys at Oswego. Triers based out of Louisville, you know, they've got the big casting center at Logan, the big recycle center at Logan. They both um, are very active in that scrap market, and we, we're trying to watch that and make sure that, that we just get enough inputs here for us to melt. But I see that thing. It, it's very dynamic right now, and, and I think this um, – I'm trying to understand what influence or impact this uh, pandemic has had on – the can market, but that's there's some new news developing there as well. Don and I have talked many times about uh, the fact that uh, here we are in Logan County in a uh, agricultural rural area that, that some would consider, and uh, we're very much uh, at the sway of the international global market. We we really truly live in a global economy, and it's interesting that the dynamics. Uh, would affect things that that happen right here at home uh, to the extent that they do, but they certainly do, and we're at the mercy of of what happens in the international markets. It's um, I don't I don't everyone I mean maybe uh, maybe people realize it, but you know nearly fifty percent it's not quite fifty percent but almost half of the U S or North American can sheet is made right here in this plant. That's you know, we tell people that. Half of every six pack, every one six pack comes from this plant, whether you know soft drink, beer, whatever it might be, and um, you know it's a hundred. The U.S. can market is a, approximately a hundred billion cans, and actually, it's in, it was kind of flat to decreasing for several years because people, the health um, and some health conscious decisions people were made, made making about soft drinks, but then. It's increased a lot lately with a lot of different flavored waters, bottled waters, uh, craft beers, and I mean, people are starting to put products in cans again. It's it been it's it's increased a little bit the last couple of years. Can talk about the owners of Logan Aluminum uh, a little bit, if you will. I think most everybody knows, but go into a little detail about them, if you will. Okay, our current owners are Triers Aluminum in Louisville, and they're owned by a. Japanese holding co- or a Japanese company, which is UACJ, that's the United Aluminum Company of Japan. That was actually a um, when Nip, um, Sumitomo and Furukawa Sky, several Japanese companies combined to make that company. Uh, they bought they bought their share of Logan from BP. We had owned by BP at one time on that side. They were we were a real 
real small in scale to BP, but when they di- after they had the uh, Deepwater Horizon event in the Gulf, when they divested of their non-core businesses, Logan was sold at that time to the Japanese company. We've always had a connection with Alcan, which is now Novellus, but they spun off their primary side to the rolling side. Made Alcan, you know, made the rolling side or the, ma- the manufacturing side. Novellus, gosh, I forget how many years ago that was. Ten years, maybe, maybe longer. I don't remember. But uh, we've always, you know, since 1985, Logan has been operated as a joint venture. And um, you know, Tom mentioned the global market. One of our com- one of our owners at all times has always been an international company because Alcan was a Canadian company at one time, and uh, so we had the Canadians, the British, the Japanese, and, and Novellus is actually owned by Adita Berla or Hindalco Adita Berla, which is an Indian company. So we have an uh, international, I guess, an international if it's a heritage, but international lineage maybe <laughs> through our owners. Right. And both owners, I should say, both owners are. Uh, have been good owners, and both owners have invested very well in the plant. And the joint venture is set up so that um, they they both they both share in the fixed costs of the business. But um, if they the one if there's excess capacity, the other has an opportunity to take that, and that's been very you know because of Logan's conversion cost has always been a favorable, has always been a strong point. That's worked out to our advantage very well. Uh, talk, if you will, about the connection with uh, the Novellus plant in Guthrie. Yeah, we have a that's a that's a it's a it's if it's a phenomenal facility for those that haven't seen it. But um, the um, you know, Novellus sees they they sometimes in North America. Novellus is a global company, but in North America they speak of a southern system and a northern system. The northern system being the Oswego plant in Kingston, uh, Ontario. The southern being like Logan. Maria, Greensboro, and actually we do some in socket Warren, Ohio. And the uh, Guthrie plant you know, was a, a nice fit for Logan. Now, what, what Novellus will have to decide is, are they going to run can sheet at Logan or automotive at Logan? That's, that, that is still, that's still being evaluated. But the, um, the, no, the plant manager at the Guthrie plant actually came from Logan. It's Paul Banks, a you know, good friend of mine and a you know, long history with Alcan and, uh, and Logan for the last, gosh, he was at Logan 10 or 12, 12, 13 years. So there's a nice connection between the two plants just on a uh, cultural and understanding uh, team concept, team management. Uh, but we're real proud to have that plant in the area. Tom, what do you have on your mind? We are working diligently diligently and uh, have applied for a federal build grant to improve the narrow bridges on US 79 between Russellville and Guthrie in the anticipation that there's going to be increased truck traffic and also uh, commuter traffic uh, between Russellville and uh, and Guthrie so uh, we hope to get those bridges improved and, and I think we will uh, highway projects don't happen quickly or easily, and especially in these times of, of budget stress. So it may be a few years, but uh, hopefully uh, we won't see 18 wheelers swapping mirrors on those narrow bridges uh, in the future as uh, time goes forward. Uh, I would add that the emphasis at this point is on the bridges only. So we're concentrating on getting those narrow bridges widened and, and improved. Uh, in anticipation of increased truck traffic. And I know there's some work going on in the uh, Guthrie area and near the Tennessee state line on 79. And uh, perhaps that bridge there at the CSX crossing at the grain elevator uh, as you go into Guthrie. So that uh, that has impacted uh, the area substantially and will continue to impact it going forward. And, and Tom, I, I talk to Paul frequently about that, and he, that, that's it. they're they're anxious for that as well. And that's a great project, and that's a hats off to a lot of people that have been involved in making that happen. I know you've been very active in, in that, and I think you know Todd Hammerstone from our plant has been in a lot, participating in a lot of those meetings. Um, he has. He and uh, Paul both went to Frankfurt with us to to meet with uh, Transportation Secretary Jim Gray, and we we had a very successful meeting, and their presence added a lot to our credibility and the ability to move the project forward. But, 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 but Don, to your question, we're really happy to have that plant. I mean, it's nice to have a, a consumer or a user of aluminum mm-hmm. products that close to us, and that's a state-of-the-art facility. It's going to be uh, 
it's really it's really a neat, it's an impressive plant they've built over there. And then there's been a lot of, there's been a lot of recent investment in Logan by um, well Trier and, and and Novellus, both owners have participated in that. I mean, it, it's a you know it's the industry is going to reach an inflection point with the demand for automotive competing for the what's being used for can sheet. And there's I mean there's uh, we're going to we're going to have a, there's going to be a critical point coming pretty soon I think. Hey, Ken and, and and elaborate on that. People drive who are not familiar with this part of the country and they drive down the road and they look over and say. What on earth is that over there? Uh, talk about the expansions that have taken place in the last few years, if you will. In the last, um, guys, the last five years, I don't know if it's five years or four or six, but, I mean, the last, you know, it, there's been probably between 400 and $500 million invested in this facility, and that, that's that's amazing. That says a lot for the, the people that are, the teams that are here, to, to, because these owners had, they could have invested in other plants. Or they could have built new plants. They could have done. They had other options, but they picked Logan for a reason. And I think it's based on what was, has been built here. But they, you know, they built the DC four recycle center, and um, I think that's what, in reference to the call that called earlier, I did get during the break. I texted a, someone, and we are working with an exterminator to get that area sprayed. But we'll try to see if we can up the emphasis on that to improve the effectiveness of the spring. But we're, we are aware of it, and I got a call or an email or text last week, so we'll try to address that. Um, but so that was the DC-4, then we then they invested in different scalping capacity, preheating capacity, a lot of auxiliary equipment to support the automotive industry. You know, this plant was optimized to run light gauge can sheet, and automotive sheet is significantly thicker and heavier. And we've optimized it you know, for the light gauge. We had to put some new equipment in for a um, heavier gauge product. And then we invested in a six high, uh, Triers invested in a six high cold mill, which is CM4, and it, it's in the process of running. And uh, it will, the plan is that they, that they, if you talk to the team, they, weren't, they will be the best cold mill in the world. But uh, the other best cold mills in the world are, are across the street from them right now. So it's, a <laughs> it's a healthy competition between. There's three other cold mills out here that want to be that are, that are the best in the gotcha. world at what they do. Also, so right. it, it, it's pretty good to watch to see. But the, that CM4 starting to hit its stride now, and um, it, it's an, it's there's not another mill like it out here. We, all of our mills are four high rolling mills. This will be a six high rolling mill. Has some. Mm features that the others don't have but it's it's impressive but and and a lot of it has been the infrastructure the infrastructure to support that and the uh you know we wanted to stay strong in the can market and being a can producer and not let that go away but we wanted to be able to develop new capabilities and new processes and new capacities and that's kind of what's happened Somebody's Speaking on the line of, uh, wanted to talk with you good morning you're on the air with ken purdue and tom arned I must play on the low and learn them all. I'll hang up and listen to you. I'm sorry? How much ground? How much land? Them all. I'm having, can you all understand? I'm having difficulty. I got hearing. it. Yeah. He's, he's asking how much ground or how oh, okay. many acres do you own? I, I, have, a, I have a hearing problem. So uh, <laughs> go ahead. I, I was, it, was, it was the audio was cutting out here. Now, Logan, the Logan site is, a, is about 1,000 acres, and there's about 50 acres that are under roof out here. There was, about 40, a little less than 44 under roof when it was new, and we've added enough, these new buildings were about 50 acres under roof on about a 1,000-acre site. Oh, that's a, that was a good question. I should have asked it, that, It was, too. yeah. <laughs> Let me uh, ask something uh, that uh, follow up to the... Ken made the, the comment that it was nice to have a customer down at Guthrie for a product that is coming from Logan. Uh, you all are aware, I know, that Crown Cork and Seal just announced a new can facility in Bowling Green out at the Trash Park. And uh, they, uh, Ken, I believe you were there that day. And uh, they uh, gave a little bit of a shout out to Logan and indicated that they would be uh, using some product from Logan. Uh, how significant is that for Logan? It is, And I know you can't get into too much detail about uh, business hey. plans, but how significant is it? It's real significant. It's, we're really pleased to see that. And you, you were at the scene that groundbreak. It was kind of quiet, kept on the QT for a while, and you know found out the day before and went to that. And uh, you were at the, at the uh, announcement. And when uh, Tim Donahue got up there and he, he called on Logan right there, that caught me off guard as well. Like I said earlier, but the, the sales of the actual transaction of the selling the metal handled by both of our owners, but both of our owners, both of Logan's owners. Apply a lot of product to these crown plants, 
and it is extremely good for us that there's a camp plan in this area because there's a chance for us to you know work with them, learn with them, and um, you know we have we have people that visit camp plans all the time, less so during this pandemic. But um, it's nice, and then the, the scrap stream. I mean, they, the web scrap that comes back from these camp plants. If you ever see a piece, it's where they stamp all the punch all the circles out, and the web scrap is a is clean scrap, and it just immediately can get be can be remelted. And we talked about alloy. It doesn't have to be realloyed. It's it's a good product to just put right back in and melt. Uh, having it so close, that, that logistics are good for something like that. So, all right, that that works out very well. A little further get, up market upstream. As the uh, cans are are produced, and that that web scrap is, is something that I hadn't really considered, and, and uh, that uh, that could be significant in and of itself. Most can plants that I know anything about are close to a brewery or close to a uh, manufacturing center for uh, soda and soft drinks. The uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense. The logistics for transporting empty cans. Right. Aren't uh, aren't very good. Uh, there are no breweries or soda facilities that I'm aware of that close to Bowling Green. Uh, do you have any insight into why they would select this area? It, it, no, that's a, that's the same question we've had because I mean, there's usually they build camp plants really, usually right beside a filler. Somebody's going to put soft drinks or you know or uh, beer into it. Right, or, right. Or, and we we kind of hint, hinted at that with um, when Crown was in Bowling Green for that visit. And they didn't offer anything. They didn't. I know they maybe they couldn't share anything, but um, we don't have any insight in that. But man, it makes you wonder about that, doesn't it? You yes, have... it does. Especially if you're an economic developer. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen it, but I, but I, we asked. I asked both owners what they're hearing, and they they don't know yet. They, they were both surpri- surprisingly. Both owners were completely surprised that plant was going to be built in Bowling Green. They did not know until until the day it was announced either. That, or that's, that, that's what they shared with us. Well, I can imagine that uh, can manufacturing is pretty competitive, so Crown kept that pretty close to their chest and, until they couldn't any longer. And well, I also understand that they're on an extremely aggressive, fast oh, yeah. construction schedule to get that plant up and running. He, he said those are 30-year jobs and that they um, they don't build a plant for one can line. He said they, they, they invest in the area. And I, I was impressed with the group. but They they visited Logan before, but I was very impressed with the, with the, the remarks that were shared that day. Me too. Uh, that was a very positive announcement. Let's take our final commercial break. Uh, Tom Harnett is the director of the Logan Economic Alliance for Development. Ken Perdue, plant manager for Logan Aluminum, will be right back. Choosing a funeral home requires enormous trust. This is Joey Young. At Young Funeral Home, we've been earning the trust of Logan Canyon since 1959. Because we are a family-owned funeral home, we understand the importance of treating you like family. We invite you to call us at your time of need or come in and discuss the benefits of pre-planning a funeral with our staff. We create personalized services that honor your loved one. Young Funeral Home with Chapels in Russellville and Auburn. The coronavirus pandemic has changed the way we do business at Riley White and Clinic Pharmacies in Bowling Green and Franklin. But it hasn't changed the way we take care of our customers. We're still serving your prescription needs, but instead of you entering the store, we bring them to you at the curb or the drive through We've also tried to make it as easy as possible for you to order your prescriptions. RX Mobile is our easy-to-use mobile app you can download to your phone or your tablet. It also allows you to view your drug history, prescriber information, insurance, and more. And if you don't have a compatible device, you can log in at RileyWhiteDrugs.com. Riley White provides the same dependable service we always have, while using modern innovations to fit the challenging time. As we begin the process of reopening the stores, we are begin to schedule vaccinations that are due. Please call ahead for scheduling at Riley White on the Square in downtown Russell, Clinic Pharmacy at Graves Gilbert on Park Street and Bowling Green, and Clinic Pharmacy Franklin in the Red Oak Medical Plaza, South Main Street, Franklin. On the line with us this morning is Tom Harned, the director of LEAD, and Ken Perdue, a plant manager of Logan Aluminum. Ken, has the COVID-19 pandemic uh, p- put a halt on hiring, or are there still positions available at Logan? It's, 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 I think things have slowed down a little bit, but really what's changed... Um, Don is that we're you know we're we're trying to evaluate every position we have and and we 
we're running more can sheet than automotive, and we had, we staffed up in anticipation of a lot of automotive, which we're running, but we're finding out of the efficiencies of how we do that. And so, um, you know, when there's a new position, we always look at that and say, is there somewhere, someone else in the plant who has a, the capability that they could absorb this or do this? And we've done that in some areas, but uh, there's, we're, we try to make every hiring decision a business decision, but we're still hiring people, and we have a couple of new people to be joining the team in the next couple of weeks or next in the next month maybe. We have onboarded some people uh, last month, uh, but it has slowed things down a little bit because it's tough to uh, uh, assimilate someone into the plant when they can't really meet anyone in person. I mean, it's all the, the, the teams. Things. The teams play a big part in the uh, in the hiring, don't they? Yeah, yeah, they do, and they. Um, and that's been a, that's been one of the successes of this plant. If a team has an opening, HR doesn't just send a person down and say, "You here's your employee." The teams will actually interview people that have passed the assessment, the initial testing, and the assessment, um, and they'll try to find someone that has the the uh, critical skills that are compatible or that work well with that team. And so the teams are invested in that hiring decision. And they're invested in the success of that person. And uh, they, no one wants to, they all want them, per, when they hire someone, they want them to be successful. And then sometimes if they have an opening, they may say, well, we're going to look at how we, how can we do things. I mean, it takes a minimum number of people to do what the job's out here. And, um, but we just look for the efficiency of that as well. But it's, it's I think things have slowed down. We, we kind of, we're around 1,400 people. We were 1,000 people about five or six years ago. Mm-hmm. We've added about 400 jobs with some of this expansion, but it, it's kind of flattened off. But the attrition here is, um, you know, people are starting to retire. People have been here 25, 30 years, and people are starting to look at, you know, other options or just is it time to retire type thing. Tom? I, as you know, uh, Don, and I'm not sure that uh, Ken does, I track unemployment numbers for us and all of our surrounding counties each month. The June numbers aren't out yet. Uh, they'll come out toward the end of July. It usually runs about a month behind. So the the most current numbers we have are, are May, and they've been published in, in local media. But uh, just to highlight the, the fact that Logan County has come through the pandemic in uh, pretty good shape compared to our neighbors. Our unemployment in Logan County in May was 8.8%. And uh, a couple of benchmarks that uh, I like to use, uh, our neighbors to the east, uh, Simpson County was a 12.4 versus our 8.8, and Warren County was a 12.3 versus our 8.8. So Logan County has has been blessed in in more ways than one, and we've come through this in in, uh, pretty good shape so far. Uh, We don't know what tomorrow will bring, but we know that, that people are being cautious and careful and uh, Logan Aluminum is certainly a, a good uh, example of that. And uh, Don's got us on the telephone instead of in the studio. <laughs> so uh, people are, are being people are being safe and being careful, and uh, that that's a good thing. And uh, these numbers reflect that. So I just wanted to share that with you and, and with our audience. That, that is good news, uh, Tom. We're, you know, we're just like you said, we're trying to be cautious and trying to help people make good decisions and be part of that. So that that is, and and the, and the teams want to be here. They seem to like they want to work. We, you know, the people, yeah, they're they're doing a good. The teams are doing a good job managing this. I can't say, and I can't say again enough about the medical department here and the EHS team just making this HR. Those guys, they've they've done a phenomenal job. Well, Don and I have been blessed with several birthdays, so we're we're being pretty careful. <laughs> yeah, we are. We are. And that's, 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 I, that's, I've had more of them than Tom has had, so we <laughs> are, are very careful. Tom, anything uh, you, else you want to add that's going on in your in your bailiwick right now? You want to pass along? Uh, just that uh, we we are coming through all this remarkably well compared to, to some of our neighbors. Uh, as you might imagine, there haven't been many new projects on the table, although there are one or two. Uh, I got a contact and a lead uh, just uh, last week, week before last, for uh, what could be a, a pretty good project for Logan County. So the the economy is uh, alive, and uh, projects are, are still going forward and, and being developed. Uh, as we talked about earlier, the Crown Cork and Seal project in Bowling Green is under construction. And uh, the one in uh, Guthrie, uh, I don't know if, if construction is completely finished down there or not, 
Uh, I know they're uh, looking forward to a, a rebound in the automotive business industry, and the Ford Motor Company has been running some commercials lately that uh, they're anxious, of course, to, to get back to something resembling normal operations. And the public is, and automobiles and, and pickup trucks and SUVs in particular are, are still selling very well. And that's good news for the aluminum industry. Uh, we alluded to it earlier in the, our conversation that uh, every time National Geographic or 60 Minutes say something about all that mess of, of plastic bottles floating around out in the Pacific Ocean or in the, uh, the rivers of Cambodia and Thailand, that uh, people start canning water instead of bottling it, and uh, that's good news for us. A couple of ways that that helps the economy, that helps the environment, and uh, helps our local economy with additional business for uh, beverage can sheet. So uh, I think the the wind is is blowing in in a favorable direction as far as as Logan County is concerned, and we're very pleased about that. Uh, Ken, uh, you're on the Executive Committee of Leadership Kentucky, I believe. Talk about that and and what it means. Well, um, I was a participant in the class of leadership in 2011, and it's a cross-section of of people from a cross-section of of industries and, I should say, occupations across the state of Kentucky that um, about an eight-month session, you do it once a month for eight months, I think, and... uh, you visit various facets um, of Kentucky, the education system, the agriculture part, the judicial system, the uh, energy part of eastern Kentucky, a lot of things like that. Typically about 50 students in a class, but uh, to um, people in leadership positions and just educate you about how many, uh, education about how much is going on in the state of Kentucky and um, how can... It's a networking opportunity. It's been very beneficial. A lot of um, good experiences. A lot of good, you know, a lot of good. Um, it's less about. It's a le- there are less participants though from manufacturing. That's what I'm trying to be a, a face or a voice of manufacturing mm-hmm. and industry on that group. But um, I've enjoyed it very much. Now, leadership Kentucky is is uh, uh, our, our local leadership Logan group is a is a part of that. Is that right? Well, it, it's like a. It, it's not doesn't have a direct affiliation but on a smaller scale what mm-hmm. what logan leadership is for logan county area leadership kentucky is for the state and we very actively support the logan county leadership group and, and active participation in that and um and find it to be very beneficial we've had a number of employees that have participated in that right. but it's the same it's very similar yes right okay we got a couple of minutes tom anything else you'd like to say i have been thinking uh, this whole uh, hour about how to work Virginia Tech back into the conversation. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I was uh, on the adjunct faculty at Virginia Tech for a while when I was in Virginia. And, there you uh, go. That's not the only reason I invited Ken, but that does factor into the overall decision. But uh, Ken, go Hokies. That's what I say. And if, if if there if there is going to be a football season, that's still undetermined. It looks like, but are in in indeterminate at this point. I can't tell. Yeah, you came from Virginia, didn't you? I, well, I came from here, but I, I went to Virginia early in my right. career, right after I graduated from WKU and spent 40 years in, in Virginia. So I, I, I was on the Virginia Tech campus many, many times. It's a, it's a, it's a beautiful place. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. The, the parade field and the drill field and the, the whole uh, the ambiance, the engineering school, uh, all of that. This is a great I'm, happy to, I'm happy to be in Kentucky. I'm happy to be in Logan County. And I mean, I, like I said, I feel blessed. And I, again, I can't thank the. If I say if I don't say anything on the air today, it's just, I want to thank the the teams that are at Logan and what they're getting done because this place is a it's an incredible facility and it's, and it's a strength of the people that built this place. Great and to have you. Great to have you. Better it. Great to have you on the show, Ken. Tom, you always bring very interesting guests. I used to say bring out here. You don't bring them. <laughs> you, you arrange for very interesting Thanks, guests. And, uh, good to have you both. Ha- have a great day. Tom, Thanks, Tom. Ken. Thank, you've thank, been thank, a great thank, guest. Thank yeah. you. Thank, uh, thank you. Thank. Well, thank you all. You've been very good. Thanks now. Thanks Goodbye. for being with us. Goodbye today. Goodbye. Uh,